Well, speculation now mounting that there might some sort of sinister connection between the deadly shooting in Tennessee and the holy month of Ramadan, which ends today. Uh, Ryan Morrow, he is a national security analyst for the Clarion Project, and that's a nonprofit organization dedicated to exposing the dangers of Islamic extremism. Thank you so much for joining us early this morning, Ryan. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I want first to talk about the possible connection to Ramadan and specifically it ending. We know that the gunman uh, posted a blog and amongst some of the things that he said on this blog was this, brothers and sisters, don't be fooled by your desires. This life is short and bitter and the opportunity to submit to Allah may pass you by. What do you believe is the connection with Ramadan here or do you believe there is one? I suspect there is, uh, because based on his blog post, you can see that he was fixated on going to the greatest possible length uh, in order to gain entry into what he would view would be paradise, and that would include jihad. Those are two themes that he talked about. And ISIS had been saying as Ramadan was beginning that during the month of Ramadan, the obligation for jihad is ten times as great. But if you die in jihad, the reward from Allah is ten times even greater than it normally would be. And so if you're a fanatical, radical Muslim, you're going to want to cash in on that award before Ramadan ends. So we have that warning. We know that people are being encouraged to participate in this, specifically at this time. We even know that they're targeting specifically military bases. So what do you do to fight it and keep this from happening? Well, you have to go after those underlying themes. Keep in mind that on his blog, uh, he wasn't talking about ISIS specifically. There are specific themes, specific interpretations of Islam that we need to target, not the religion as a whole. Uh, we can ally with most Muslims in discrediting those interpretations, but you could eliminate ISIS, and you'll still have another group take its place as long as you have doctrine that say that building the caliphate is a good thing, that implementing Sharia governance mm -hmm. is a good thing, and so you need a grand alliance in order to discredit those beliefs. But really, though, this isn't some grand alliance when you talk about these individuals, and, and there's been some debate whether or not they should be called, in fact, lone gunmen, but this is an individual taking it upon right. himself to go out and target um, this specific location. How do you fight against that? How can we trace all of them and stop all of them from doing horrific, horrific acts like this? Well, beliefs drive those actions. Um, and so if you want to get to the core of the problem, what causes the radicalization, it is those, it is those Islamist radical doctrines. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that you're not going to be able to track all of them. But it is important for the American people to report what they see on Facebook, on Twitter, on other social media accounts that indicate violent intent. Because one of the most frustrating patterns that we see over and over again is that someone will have an online account, they'll have a Facebook account with lots of friends, and they express radicalism, and few, if anyone, actually takes the step to report them. And so the American people do have a frontline role here in stopping these types of attacks. Yeah, it is a new era in the fight against terrorism. Thank you so much, Ryan. We appreciate you joining us and appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it is now 12 minutes.